Hey, first graders, we're going to start with one problem that will kind of review what we were talking about um, in the last lesson. And then we're going to do something a little bit different today. We're actually going to use the pages from your book that go with this chapter first. And then you can go ahead and do the pages or do the questions that are on GoMath, okay? So if you need to pause the video and get your pages from the book, today's lesson is 4.6. Okay, so let me show you what page, um, the first page looks like. Okay, this is the first page. Um, you can see it's page 241. Starts here with a baseball cap at the top. You can see 4.6 up here. Okay, and it's going to be those first two pieces of paper are what we're going to look at together. Okay, so if you have that ready, we're gonna start with this problem, which we'll talk about um, the, the ideas we were working with yesterday. Okay, so this has, um, it says that Kyle has 13 hats and he gave five hats to Jake. How many hats does Kyle have now? Okay, so the first thing we need to identify are the clues in the story. We have 13 and we have five. We also have this word gave, which gives us a clue that we're taking away from the whole. So then my question for you is, what is the whole? Okay, wh what is it that we're talking about? We're talking about hats and how many Kyle has now. And the whole is the number Kyle started with. It was 13. Okay, so we're going to come here to step one and we are going to show 13 hats. Now, what does 13 mean? It means a group of 10 and three more, that's right. Okay, so I'm gonna quickly show my group of 10. I don't have to, didn't have to count, because I know when I fill that up, it makes 10. And then I just do three more, okay? Group of 10 and three more. And how many does he give to Jake? Five. Okay, what's our really easy number to take away? Three, which would leave us with the 10. but I don't want to just take away three. I want to take it away three, four, five. What's left? Eight. So Kyle has eight hats now. I started with 13, I took away five, and now I have eight. Okay, we were able to identify 13, as the whole group of hats, five as the part that went to Jake, and eight as the part that stayed with Kyle. Okay, and those three pieces, the whole and the two parts, are going to be very important for us today um, and the identifying of those in helping us to do our work. So let's open it up. So we're looking at these two pages now. So our job as we are reading each of these stories is to identify the whole and the parts. Okay, so let's read number one. Heather has 14 crackers. When I see a clue, I'm going to circle it. Some crackers are broken. Some, I don't know how many. Eight crackers are not broken. How many crackers are broken? Okay, so we need to know that we are talking about what? We're talking about crackers. So if I had start, started saying something about butterflies in the middle of that, we wouldn't have had to pay attention to it. We just need the numbers for crackers because the question is asking about how many crackers are broken, okay? So my question for you, we have um, two numbers circled. We have 14, we have eight. Are either of those numbers the whole? Yes, 14 is the whole because we can see 14 crackers. There's no extra details about the crackers there. 
It's just crackers. And there's 14. What does 14 mean? A group of 10. So I'm going to fill up my 10. A group of 10. And how many more? Four. One, two, three, four. A group of 10 and four more. It says that eight crackers are not broken. And here we have a detail. We have a detail that eight are not broken. With that, we know it's one of the parts. So here we have the whole group of 14, and we have to identify that one of the parts is a group of eight. And you can decide which part that is, because since we can add in any order, if we take away a part, then it's going to leave us with the same remaining part, no matter what, okay? So here I have 14. I chose eight of them. I just chose the first eight because that made the most sense for my brain. But maybe you want to choose the last eight and start from the back, and that's fine too. But I chose eight of them to represent the crackers which are not broken. That means what remains two here and four here are the ones that are broken. Two and four gives me one, two, three, four, five, six. So I have 14 crackers. Some, that's why the six is in the middle here, because this clue was in the middle. Some are broken. Eight are not broken. And there's my eight. Okay, so how many were broken? Six. So even though it was in the middle of the problem, right there, we were still able to use our eight part to help us. We really ended up thinking about it as 14 minus eight equals six. Okay, because parts can switch whether we're adding or subtracting. The parts can switch and it does not change the whole. Okay, so as we're going over here, over to number two, it says Bill has some stickers. He lost seven stickers and now he has nine stickers. How many stickers did Phil start with? Ooh, okay, so the sum, the word sum, is representing one of our missing numbers again. And this time, it's, rem it's representing our beginning number. And remember it says he lost, so something went away. So you can see over here, they have a minus because some were lost, it, they went away. So it was minus seven, and now he has nine. So seven was a part that he lost. Nine is the part he still has. So in this question, we're actually missing the whole. When we subtract, we start with that whole. Well, you may remember that with subtraction, you have a whole minus a part to equal a part. Addition, we have a part plus a part equals a whole. So in this problem, since I have seven and nine, I have the two parts, I can actually use addition to help me find the whole. I have my parts, so I'm going to put them together to find the whole. I know that if it was seven plus 10, I would just bump out the zero, it would be 17. But this isn't plus 10, it's only seven plus nine. So it's gonna be a little bit smaller. Instead of 17, it's going to be 16. Bill started with 16 stickers. 
Okay, we were able to find the whole because we knew the parts. Hillary has nine dolls. Abby has 18 dolls. How many fewer dolls does Hillary have than Abby? Fewer than. Ooh, we talked about those words quite a while ago, that when we see fewer than, we're going to be subtracting. We're going to be comparing the two numbers using subtraction. So we are comparing 18 and nine. Because 18 was the greater number, it takes the place of the whole. Okay, 18 is a greater number, we're comparing it to nine. 18 minus nine, what does that equal? Well, if you know your double stacks, then you know nine plus nine equals 18. And if nine plus nine equals 18, that's part, part, whole. Then when I turn it into subtraction, whole minus part equals part, my whole is 18, which we see right here. My part is nine, which we see right here. And my other part is also nine. So that's what we're missing. Hillary has nine fewer dolls. Okay. Looking here, even without reading the story, I can look and I can see I have the whole because subtraction will start with the whole and I have a part. When you're missing a part, we can use subtraction. And remember, my parts can switch places. So even though the story has the whole missing number and part, we can have the part switch places. We can think about it 12 minus 5 and still find the missing part. Okay, 12, I can see easily that I could take away 2. And I know 2 and 3 make 5. So if I take away 2, I'm going to be to 10. And then I take away 3 more. And that will put me at seven. So my missing part is seven. Josh had 12 seats. He planted some in the dirt and has five left. So he started with 12 and planted some or seven, that would leave him with five. Okay, can you try that same thing here on number five? Remember, in subtraction, we start with a whole. We take away a part to find the other part. And parts can always switch places and it will still be true. So instead of doing 13 minus blank, we can say 13 minus 8. Okay. What would be my missing part? Pause and see if you can figure that out. Did you get five? That would be the correct answer. 13 minus five equals eight. Okay. 13 minus eight equals five. If I have 13 and take away three to get down to 10, an eight is made out of three and five, so I still have to take away five. But maybe you thought of it a different way, and that's okay too. You want to work with your brain the best way it can. Okay, these last ones aren't giving you the number sentence. You have to really look and pay attention to the details. So let's find them as we go. Ten frogs are in the tree. Three more jump into the tree. Four jump out of the tree. How many are in the tree now? 
Okay, so what was our starting number? 10, we had 10 frogs. Okay, then it says three more jump into it. Does that make it sound like there's going to be more frogs or fewer frogs? We're going into the tree, we're adding to it. So we have 10 plus three. Ooh, we can do that quick. 10 plus three, bump out the zero. What is it? 13. Okay, we have 13. And now it says that four jump out. So we're gonna take four out. What's 13 minus four? Well, if it was 13 minus three, it would just take us back to 10. But we're taking out an extra one. We're not just taking out three, we're taking out four. So what will be left? Nine. Okay. And you can do this on, with pictures. You can do this using your counters. Any of the tools that we've worked on, what works best for your brain? Okay. Number seven, there are nine more turtles in the, um, in the water than on a log. Nine more than on a log. There are 13 turtles in the water. More than, ooh, that tells us we're going to be comparing. 13 are in the water, how many are on the log? What numbers are we comparing? When we see more than or fewer than, it tells us to compare the numbers. And what tool do we use to compare? We use subtraction. So if I have 13, I'm going to subtract nine. And I started with 13 because it was the greater number. Now this is interesting because I have a 13 as my whole and nine as one of my parts. Did we just see that somewhere else? We did, we saw it right here. 13 was the whole and nine was one of the parts. What have we said about parts? Parts can switch places and it doesn't change the whole. So if I have a nine here and its partner um, to make 13 was four, then I can move the nine over and the four would take its place. The parts can switch places and the whole stays the same. Okay, so 13 minus nine is four because 13 minus four is nine. They're related facts. We'll talk more about related facts in the next chapter. Okay, number eight, choose a number to fill in the blank and solve. This is a good challenge for you to do. Okay, so we're not gonna do eight or nine together but it would be a great one for you to try on your own and see how you do, okay? So now that we've practiced some of these together, you are going to go ahead and do your Go Math lesson, okay? Hopefully this helped make more connections in your brain about how parts and wholes work together with addition and with subtraction. So listen to the stories, you can have your whiteboard or um, something you can take notes on, on a piece of paper or something um, next to you and write down the clues as you find them so that you can really try your best to make those connections and find the missing numbers. Okay, good luck and have fun.